today we're out here um, doing some work on artificial burrowing owl burrows. This is one of five sites here at Rio Salado, at which Wild at Heart, a local nonprofit, and Audubon Arizona, the State Office of National Audubon, have installed artificial burrows for the burrowing owls. And so we're very close to downtown Phoenix, aren't we're we? Very close, mm -hmm. about two miles. About two miles, mm -hmm. and we're hearing the air, air traffic uh, landings. And, and the traffic, from, yeah. And traffic from mm -hmm. cars. So right, we know right. there's a lot a lot of people, a lot of development around us. So yes. this is a little bit of an oasis then? It is, absolutely. In Not only city. for people, but also for animals. This six mile stretch of the Salt River was once a series of landfills and gravel pits. Um, and the city of Phoenix and partners have um, done a tremendous amount of work to make this into a wonderful resource um, for people and for wildlife pretty much right in the center of the city. A couple issues that are facing the burrowing owl, and one is there's very few burrowing mammals uh, around um, in order to provide habitat for the owls. They don't dig their own burrows. Um, so while they are losing habitat to development, um, the habitat that remains has fewer and fewer burrowing mammals. So that's why people need to get involved. You can see that they're putting these extensions on the existing burrows. Extensions. Extensions. Mm -hmm. So they're extending the burrows out. Um, and they're also putting kind of a wider opening. And research has shown that the owls are actually preferring a larger opening than what we had had. Um, so we're seeing to that preference. Um, and then also we found that having the burrow entrance lower to the ground makes it easier for the baby owls to come and go. Um, it also makes it easier for adult owls to escape predation. Yeah, these burrow enhancements are, are a uh, outgrowth of the research program that we've been doing for a couple of years to try to figure out how to improve burrows and how to improve the relocation program. The regular burrows are, work fine. They, they, we have thousands of them installed, but in areas where a raptor is chasing, like the baby birds, we want to give them a bigger entrance so all the baby birds can get into the burrow at the same time. And so that's what these enhancements do. The other thing is they have a bend in them, and that uh, tends to block light, and it makes it more difficult for a raptor to follow the baby birds or an adult into the burrow. The tubing that you see here, it goes down into the ground where there's more burrow hardening. And that's all part of okay. preventing dogs from being able to dig it up. Okay. Then it goes down four feet into four where feet. the- Four yeah, feet it goes, into the ground. Yeah, it goes down four feet. Is it just it, the same size of a hole? It's or? just like it's just like this just like tubing. That four feet deep. All the way down, and there is a five-gallon bucket down at the bottom. Okay. The, all, all of the burrows at this facility also are, are enhanced. They have a, a camera tube for a special camera that can actually go down into the burrow and actually watch the owls with infrared light. Okay. And some of those videos are online. Owls are a great uh, vehicle for conservation. Um, they're cute, people resonate with owls anyway, but when you have a tiny owl that is pretty inquisitive and easy to see, um, it just makes people all the more interested. The burrowing owls that are coming here are ones that have been displaced by development. So what happens is, um, when construction is about to begin, concerned citizens, sometimes the developer themselves, will contact Wild at Heart Wild at Heart will go out safely, um, trap the owls and remove them from harm's way um, and bring them back to their aviaries. And so Wild at Heart can have 100 owls or sometimes even more at one time waiting for new homes. Um, and that's where Audubon comes in. If we were to just take that owl from location A and put it at location B, it's gonna fly back to location A, which we don't want. So we're taking it from location A putting it in an aviary, keeping it there for 30 days, minimally, until burrows are ready. Is there any reason why these are all clustered in this way? You try to keep the burrows together? This particular spot was a release site. So basically, the burrows that you see right here, the burrows that are down there, and these burrows, 
the reason why they're close together is because the, for relocation, we put a big giant tent over all of these burrows. There were eight burrows inside. We might put 10 owls inside the tent, and every owl has a shot at a burrow. So we'll go out to a site um, and build a temporary tent, and the tent will house the owls for 30 days, again, another month. Um, so what that means is the owls can go in and out of the burrows or in this tent. They're exploring their new home. Um, they can see out, um, but they can't get out. Oh, so we're keeping them, yeah. keeping them confined. Fine. And they're fed. And we feed them every day. Uh -huh. um, we feed them mouse sickles <laughs> every day. Um, and they're very, very, very well fed. So we used to do this process during the spring, and that's when the birds are in breeding condition. They want to start nesting. Everything's telling them to do that, and we're feeding them lots and lots of food. So typically the females will begin to lay eggs in the, in the burrows. Um, we take the tents off after 30 days, and in most cases the birds will stay. But at that point, they're free to go. They can, so they could relocate yeah, somewhere they can go else. wherever they want. Um, before we take the tent off, though, we'll be sure that there's plenty of extra burrows for them around. Um, so they, they will have plenty of choices, or they could f totally fly away, but the important thing is they're alive to make that choice. How does this compare to, the, to a natural burrow? Is this so if different? You, if you, well, it's based on the prairie dog model. So if you go back uh, about, I think, 30 years ago, they tried to relocate uh, prairie dogs in New Mexico. Hmm. and they were the first ones to use this kind of tubing and a five gallon bucket for prairie dogs. And it didn't seem to work very well for them, for the prairie dogs, but the burrowing owls moved in. Oh. So that was the, that was the initial idea. Was the we could, Somebody, yeah, we happened. could relocate burrowing owls using five gallon buckets and a tube. You know, there's a couple things about burrowing owls that are surprising. They're not what you would expect from owls. They're active during the day. They like to live in groups and they live in the ground. Over the last 20 years, we've relocated something on the order of 2,000 to maybe 2,500 owls. 2,500 owls. It's in that neighborhood. And since Audubon's been involved with Wild at Heart since 2013, we've released um, about 250 owls, not only here, but at other sites other, as other well. Sites. But there's definitely need for additional sites for burrowing owls. Our research has shown that um, artificial burrows that are installed adjacent to agricultural areas um, tend to be better for the owls. For obvious reasons, a lot of rodents. Um, that can also be dangerous for the owls if the farmer is spraying pesticides, but if they're not, um, then we, we find that owls that are relocated adjacent to agriculture do the best. It doesn't affect the economy, it doesn't affect development, it doesn't affect agriculture, and in fact, people will find out that it's good for them, that maybe their business, their agriculture is better. An example would be barn owls. Barn owls can do great in hay sheds and tool sheds and equipment sheds on a farm. All that we have to do is get uh, the right kind of big container in the right spot in the shed, and barn owls will eat pocket gophers that farmers hate. All of the farmers that have sheds should have houses for barn owls. And the, their number one complaint is how do I get rid of gophers? And a barn owl is the solution. Doesn't require any poison, there's no special traps. They'll wipe out the gophers on a farm if you have enough barn owls. We try to get the cost of materials down to 15 or $20 a burrow. And, That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, I mean, we... You've got to dig the... Dig the well, we trash, get somebody trash. to donate the backhoe. Oh, you do? Yeah, wow. if, we, if we try it, we get a free backhoe, a free operator, if possible. Wow. And then uh, we get the land is... Uh, access to the land is donated. Yeah. The volunteers come out, put the materials in the ground. Some materials are donated, but mostly they're oh. purchased and then the backfill, backhoe comes back or a tractor and does the backfill. Okay. So all, every step of this is optimized to lower cost. Anything that's in decline, we can start to figure out how to add niche habitat in the urban area because if people don't learn about it, if they don't find ways to enjoy it and study it, then it, it's not gonna grow. 
we're not, we're not going to solve this problem. Having this project right here in the city has been invaluable to introduce people to burrowing owls and then to Audubon and to Wild at Heart and to just the whole world of conservation. And more than that, the world of conservation action. And I'm seeing now more than ever, there's a real desire in people that live in the city even to do something good for the environment, to give back and to be a part of conservation, not just watch it on TV or hear it on NPR, but they want to actually get their hands dirty.